Can yes. you see it? Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. So I will start. Uh, so <laughs> first of all, thanks for uh, inviting me here. Um, uh, I really like the community and uh, frankly, I learn a lot, uh, not just from reading the book, but uh, also like, you know, reading and, and having conversation with others people on that forum. So, and uh, all those meetups are great as well. So uh, thanks for inviting me. And yeah, um, I want to talk a bit about, you know, the shaping and how we sort of leverage the design sprint and maybe some, some other tips. Um, and maybe sort of give you different, like some, let's say different perspective on, on, uh, on shape up, uh, based on our experience. Um, okay. Maybe a little bit of like for the context, um, about Salzita, uh, for us, it's probably a little bit different because we are software development agency, which means that we are working for our clients. Uh, mostly we are doing, you know, mob and mobile and uh, web applica applications. Uh, we are focusing uh, on like using web technologies like, you know, React, Node.js, React Native and stuff like that. Uh, currently we have like, I don't know, I think like 85 people, I don't know, 40 to 50 uh, developers, 12 QA engineers, uh, six, seven UI developers, four or five UX designers, and then uh, some uh, obviously like uh, PMs and uh, some some other people. And right now I think we are running like eight to 10 projects for, for our clients. And a little bit about like history, like uh, we started a little bit more than 10 years ago. And actually our CEO, uh, he was a developer, uh, like building or uh, developing browser extensions, which back then sort of naturally led to you know single page application and and then like uh, using technology like Angular and React, and you know from that it naturally led to where we are. But uh, like a few years back, uh, from this sort of very engineering centric, we tried to change to more like product company. So what we are seeing now is like we are UX first. Basically, we enjoy projects where we can also like help clients to you know prepare good designs uh, or product that really makes sense and can be successful. And what we are thinking right now is even sort of more specialized and maybe. Uh, specialize in uh, e-commerce and on projects like that. So that's uh, a little bit about uh, Salsita. And um, maybe a little bit about me. Uh, so first what I'm doing and then uh, stuff that I, I uh, sketch uh, there. So I started in Salsita almost uh, eight years ago as a, as a UI developer and then moved to a PM position. And this year uh, I started on position that we call uh, director of product, which uh, practically means that uh, I am helping you know, UX designers, UI developers and PMs to generally sort of improve the way how we build products and serve in better way to, to our client. But maybe would be more interesting sort of how I get to shape up because I don't know how, how you guys have it, but like I really read it like sort of the first time uh, when uh, Ryan published it. And because I was following Basecamp for a long time and it was like, yes, finally somebody sort of wrote it down something that I couldn't wrote because I'm not that skillful and, and knowledgeable, but definitely it's sort of all aligned with uh, with the, the thinking I had. And uh, then I, when I was preparing a presentation, I was sort of like, how, how this happened? Like how, how this sort of very, I would say different way of thinking, like how I get there that it really sort of speak uh, uh, to my mind. And, uh, and maybe it will also uh, help you to understand some of those things that I will uh, tell you a little bit later. You know, uh, on the high school, I always like like economics, uh, especially. And on university, I, I uh, discovered this Austrian economics is basically 
uh, that's you know I, I think right now known because uh, you know Bitcoin is so popular and uh, Austrian economics is sort of behind it. But like there is interesting aspect like they those guys like they didn't really like like you know charts and formulas, but they they really admire entrepreneurs and this entrepreneurship mindset where people uh, you know the entrepreneurs are you know finding problems and 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 figuring out solution and basically that's our mindset right as a as a product people that hey, we see problem and we try to find a solution um and also they have like this mindset that it's not about some uh again formula but it's more about people how they behave and i, I really like that and also they have this like idea of like uh, emerging spontaneous order which i feel that it's very uh, we, we are fighting as a, as managers very often with that that okay we on one hand we want to have like the, this processes and sort of have clear way how to do things but on the other hand like we need you to have the freedom uh for people to to be creative and and basically what they said or uh, more specifically hayek said look you know we can have order but it needs to be bottom up and that's top down which really uh like influenced me and because of that, I, I think I found like um, uh, this sort of modern management theories like management uh, 3.0 or uh, evolutionary organization from people like uh, Jürgen Appel or Gary, Gary Hamill and, and others. And basically what they are talking about that, okay, companies are complex system. You know, there is this good aspect of self-organization that, that we should have sort of evolutionary processes in the company and we should, uh, look at the company sort of holistically and not just like watching one single KPI, but you know, it's not enough. You need to really look holistically. And, and I, I really like those. And uh, I see all those aspects. It's uh, not just shape up, but generally, as I said, I was watching Basecamp. I, I think uh, to much degree, they are following in their own way, uh, those kind of things. So uh, I like that. Obviously, I was influenced by all those like agile, lean, and, and design thinking, where I count also the design sprint, which I will be talking about a little bit later. And obviously, for when you ask, uh, you know, what uh, agile means to you, like everyone, I think, answers a little bit differently. So for me, it's really about like this learning cycle that you design something, then you build it, and you get feedback, and you repeat that again and again. And I, I find that's really powerful. And but there was always one thing I really hate about Agile, and more specifically about Scrum, and it was estimation and sport, uh, story pointing. It's like uh, you know, I'm not great in uh, statistician or uh, anything, but like it was like this is so unscientific method. Like you know, those you know, basically random people randomly voting and about random stuff. And then we somehow count with it as a as a fact and we build our plans around it. It's, it, it was really crazy to me. And I discovered this uh, group of people uh, that's uh, called like No Estimates. And there is this book for uh, from uh, Vasco uh, Duarte, uh, which calls No Estimate. And this was the first time I uh, like uh, discover or like somebody uh, uh, in the agile sphere was talking about like time budgeting, like replace the story pointing with time budgeting, basically ask how much you want to invest in this feature, right? And, or solving this problem more precisely and exactly what, you know, shape up is doing. And it was also the first time I, I saw in agile world some, meaningful risk management basically they were saying look uh you know there's always risk so there is one way how to do it like try to split all the stories to smallest possible pieces and then prioritize them to make sure that you always at least do the most valuable things right and again that's something that's happening in shape right like you sort of need to control the scope and you try to uh you know put out basically those things that are not that valuable or they are not the core functionality. Uh, and so those guys were mentioning things like no backlogs that you shouldn't be slaves of, you know, long to-do lists for forever, but like you, uh, every time that you start building something, you, you should ask yourself, okay, what right now is the most valuable thing? And it was really great. Uh, I, I love it. <laughs> and frankly, it was like, I don't know, I think like four years ago, and I was 
talking about a lot. I have like this internal lecture in Sausage about it. And, and I think people actually like it, but I couldn't sort of uh, make it in reality because it was like, okay, you know, there is a problem. There are some practical tips, but it wasn't sort of coherent enough, comprehensive enough to, to really uh, somehow say, okay, this is the way how it should be done, right? Obviously, I was uh, also very influenced by uh, Nassim Taleb work about, you know, ergodicity and antifragile, antifragile uh, which I, I think it's, it's really great. And again, for product people, I think it's super uh, great reading. And then, you know, Shape Up uh, came up and it was like, Jesus, this is so great. It's like really practical way how it's written. Uh, I can sort of follow it. And suddenly I had the arguments like, Suddenly, I, I didn't have to have long conversation why estimation is bad because here is basically tell you how to manage the project and it was super great. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's basically how, how I get there. And I would be definitely interested how other people get there, uh, you know, what, how they were influenced because I think it's always good to get inspired by, by the people uh, that you are reading or watching or following somehow. Anyway, so... This talk, I want to really um, talk uh, about the shaping process because, <laughs> frankly, one thing, you know, the, the book is really great. It gives, it's a practical manual how, how you should, you know, execute a project. But there is one problematic part, and that's the shaping, like how you should shape. And for me, it's sort of like magic, and I def definitely don't feel that I'm super great at it. Uh, and uh, especially, I, I see. Uh, many problems, but I will point out a few of them, like really defining the problem, like, you know, what is the problem? Because it sounds easy, but sometimes you actually trying to describe problem, but because it's hard, you actually de define the solution and you sort of mask it as a problem. And I really like this like demand side book. And I, I know that Ryan is uh, uh, sort of closely working with Bob Meister, the author of the book. And it, I, I, I just reading it and it's super great, super interesting. And it's really points out, okay, you know, how to define the problem because it's, it's really, it's, uh, it's really hard thing to do. And, you know, also answering the question, like, is it worth to, to solving it? Because maybe it's because I'm in the agency, but, you know, we, we are following our clients, like, okay, you know, clients will tell us what are the problems, but, I think our job is also to sort of question if it's worth to solve it. And uh, so that's definitely one problem. Second problem, you know, how to sort of define the document, that page, right? Like you on one hand don't want to uh, leave there any sort of those rabbit holes or any unknowns. But on the other hand, you want to give the uh, team the uh, space and wiggle room to be creative and also uh, modify sort of the scope in order to get things done uh, in in the given time frame, and I think it's super hard <laughs> job to do, and and probably it's uh, lots of about the experience. Uh, but yeah, like it, it, it's definitely I feel that it's problematic or it's hard thing to do. Uh, third thing, those risk and unknowns. Like I think. That's the whole uh, methodology about like that you tackle the risks, you tackle the unknowns. And that's, you know, that's the main po point of the shaping, right? That you you think about it and you somehow identify those risks, identify the unknowns and you figure out the solution. But it's obviously very hard. And last thing, you know, I, I feel that in Basecamp, frankly, it's a sort of small company, frankly. Uh, I think they have just 14 developers, I don't know, six, six designers. So it's really small group. Uh, but in, in the bigger companies or in other case where we need to work with client and some, sometimes uh, when, we talk, when we say client, it means that there are a bunch of people on their side. Uh, like, it's not like that, okay, I am this great shaper and I will figure something out on my own and just here and just do it, right? It doesn't work because I need to get buy-in of the client or in bigger companies of, of stakeholders. And frankly, uh, in our case, I think you need to get buy-in of, of your team. I, you know, I, I like this open culture where people sort of, you know, talk about everything. And I think in this kind of culture, people actually sort of even demand, I would say, 
that they have some word in it. And uh, the way how sort of, I think Ryan's talking, I know that it's specific to uh, base game and, and the argumentation is totally makes sense to me. I'm just saying that in some kinds, maybe it doesn't work that way because we don't have that history. We have different circumstances and we need to think about that. So uh, definitely I see it as a trouble as well. Um, so, and frankly, uh, we were doing design sprint uh, for some time this, this year, even more. And I feel that it actually answers lots of those troubles that uh, I was talking about. Uh, and frankly, there are lots of similar similarities. Uh, so for example, <clears throat> by the way, we are using this uh, sort of enhanced uh, design sprint 2.0, which is just four days. And that's one thing that is common again to Shapa, right? Like you have the time budget, okay? I know that I will spend four days, no more, right? Which, which is great. Uh, also, they, they are, it's really focused about, okay, what is the goal of the sprint? What is the problem? And again, I see similarities to, to, to shape up. Uh, there's lots of sketching during the design sprint uh, and sketching is basically the, the fat markers exercise in shape up. Uh, then there is a exercise and I, I will get to it a bit later, which called like storyboarding. And before that is like user test flow, they call it. And it's basically breadboarding uh, from shape up. So again, it's, it is sort of same techniques. Um, but there are things that I really like about Design Sprint. Uh, so especially uh, if you are as me sort of a new in, in shaping and you still feel, okay, I don't know how to shape. I, I don't have 10 years of experience shaping. The Design Sprints give you a clear structure. It's like, okay, you have four days. The exercise is given, it's, they are very well described. There are lots of videos and, and articles about it. So if you are not sure, you just read it and it's super great. So. Uh, you don't need to wander around how to do shaping. Like it, it sort of gives you. Uh, frankly, I like that it's team exercise. Uh, again, I, I get why uh, all the arguments that uh, you know shaping is specific type of work and it's not for everyone, uh, and you don't want to waste other people's time. But still, I, I really enjoy working uh, you know with 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 the people in my team and. And I really actually enjoying those design sprint because it's a team exercise, especially maybe in this uh, COVID era where it, sort of everyone's working uh, alone. So uh, yeah, I like that it's team exercise. Uh, also, you know, we are again in our situation, you know, new clients comes in, maybe they already have some product and frankly, I don't have much inside, right? And in the design sprint, it's not just like designer there. You will invite also full stack developer. Sometimes we invited QA. Sometimes we even have a copywriter. And you you have all those different perspectives. That uh, sure, like as a PM, you have like this you know knowledge, a little bit of everything from all the field. But those guys have like the deep knowledge, and sometimes they they see the rabbit hole where you don't see it, and and it's really. Uh, useful to to know it and uh, design sprint again gives you the opportunity to explore those kind of things and last thing the basically the last day and again i will get to it the last day is about user testing what what you came up during the design sprint and uh i know again that in basecamp they didn't they don't like user test basically they, they push the production and get the customer feedback and again i totally get uh, the argumentation behind it but still, I feel that for me, it's an opportunity to, to have a conversation with a customer, which is always good. And I know even in Basecamp, they really like to doing those things. So for me, it's like not really user testing. Maybe it's more like conversation with customer where you show some visual stuff and that sort of spies the, uh, the discussion. Generally, the design sprint uh, is about like, you know, you start with defining the problem. And then basically you try to sort of like diverge in in sense that you try to come up and get inspired by as many concepts as possible sort of and the rest of the design sprint you are trying to figure out like the best solution for you and and create like one common concept then you prototype it and then uh, you user test it if i go a little bit in more detail how exactly for example we are doing it and, and uh, you know if you google on internet maybe there are some little bit different version especially uh, there uh, of the 2.0, but 
I would say the high level is uh, pretty much same. So on the first day, it starts with, uh, it's called expert interviews. Uh, for me is that you invite and sometimes, for example, if you have some stakeholders or client that they don't have time, like if you invite just for that exercise, it's really valuable because it's sort of like open, natural conversation about the problem that you are trying to solve. And during that time, like all the team members in the design sprint, they are writing what's called how my trees. It's basically a way of noting things down. And what you are trying to note is goals, problems, and challenges uh, that you want to solve during the design sprint. And uh, the, the, the reason why you're using how might this is sort of, you have the same format. So I don't know, like if, let's say we are building or uh, designing some delivery application, it will be how might we, I don't know, enter address of the user, how might uh, we uh, provide way of selecting, you know, the time and date of the delivery and stuff like that. and. And what you do after this exercise, you sort of take all those how might needs for all the people, put it into a single document, somehow organize it into groups, and then you will let uh, people to sort of vote for you know the things that they feel that they are most interesting one or most important one to solve. And in the end, usually you should have uh, what's called decider, which usually is a client or stakeholder. This is some important person who has the ability to decide things. And in the end, the decider should say, okay, you guys should during the design spin focus on this thing, on this problem. And that way we say, okay, this is the goal for our design sprint. Then you sort of quickly sketch sort of a map of your solution. You can think about it as a user journey. And again, it's good then discuss it in a way, okay, what part of user journey we want to cover in the application? Because some, you know, let's say that again, the delivery application and it could start, let's say with, I don't know, sign up form or whatever. And, but maybe it's not that important. It's okay, we need to do it, but designer can do it later because it's sort of straightforward and we should uh, focus on the parts that are, uh, you know, complicated and, and needs our brainstorming. So it will help you again to focus on uh, what's important. The next exercise is what's called lightning demos. Uh, basically each team member will show uh, competitors application, direct, indirect, or any application that can somehow uh, inspire you by, uh, inspire you for, for the solution. And uh, especially now when we are running a remote sprint, so what we do, we sort of take the screenshot uh maybe write some bullet points and put it to the document and we try to basically create a library of let's say good ideas but frankly it could be also like sort of uh bad ideas like hey we don't want to do this because it's really sucky solution um and then that's sort of it for uh sort of uh team exercises and the last exercise it's uh people do it on it on their own uh each person uh, in the team will sketch the concept based on their thinking, based on what they saw during the lightning demos and create some concept that they can do it on the paper, they can use you know, some digital whiteboard or whatever tool they want, it really doesn't matter. And first day, uh, the second day, uh, we sort of hang up on the wall or on, on a virtual wall, all those presentation uh, or all those concept. And then what we do is that each uh, person sort of present uh, what they did and you know somehow introduce the concept and there's a little bit of discussion about it. And after that, uh, there is my favorite exercise, which is dot voting that each uh, person has as many votes as possible. We basically go through all those concepts and to specific ideas, they put like small dot basically saying, okay, I like this. And you create kind of a heat map of good ideas that you say, okay, this button, everyone's like it, there's lots of dots. So, okay, probably we want to use it in our common concept. And again, then sort of we review this, this heat map and uh, then we pick sort of the solution and the, the small, like we sort of ask the decider again, ideally uh, like what as a whole, what concept they like most and we will uh, use it as a sort of base. And then we also review, okay, what 
uh, but all uh, like those small uh, small solutions, small ideas, like which one are good for, and we should use it in in our common solution. And then uh, once we do it, like we do user flow, which again it's basically the uh, breadboarding, which means we say, okay, so in our solution we have like this three page, I know login screen, home page detail, uh, and on each screen there needs to be those kind of elements. And usually, frankly, it, it seems like straightforward exercise, uh, but many times I experience that here uh, the team stacks for for some reason, like that. You know, suddenly it uh, it reveals some problems, some challenges, and it needs to be discussed through. And then after that, when we are done, uh, like there is a storyboarding. It's basically to say, okay, here's a login, and quickly sketch how it will sort of looks like, and you try to re reuse as much as possible from from those concepts uh, above. And that's sort of end of the second day. The third day, uh, you don't need a client or stakeholder. It's about prototyping. The designer try to prototype, use Figma or uh, Adobe XD, and they try to you know prepare what, what we were talking about those uh, last two days. And the fourth day, we do user testing, like usually three, four uh, sessions. And after the last one, we do like demo to again client or stakeholder, uh, discuss next steps, do short retrospective. Uh, I also like recommend, especially if there is a full stack developer and it could be, um, let's say, complicated solution. Uh, you know, the developer can use the third and fourth day for some like technical research and and some kind of proof of concepting to make again sure. Okay. Are there really unknowns, or we know how to do it? Uh, and we are, we have at least some some um, probability that we can we can do it. So uh, that's definitely, I think it's a good idea. Um, yeah. By the way, like if anybody has sort of any questions or comments, <laughs> feel free to uh, to interrupt me. Um, when I was, as I said, like in uh, design sprint, I feel that there's lots of similarities with sort of the shape of thinking. Uh, but there are some differences um, that sort of goes against. And one is that when you are prototyping, especially right now, when you have like those great tools like Figma, basically you can in one day create really high fidelity mocks and it looks really great. But if you, for example, read a book, uh, which uh, I think it's like, eight years old or something like that. And that that time, there weren't any great tools like that. And usually people, for example, use, uh, I don't know, PowerPoints or uh, stuff like that. And it was way more sort of high level. And I would say more aligned with actually the shape of where you are not discussing the details. And so I was thinking actually, okay, you know, for, for the shape of document, for the page, like, Okay, it's good to have the user flow, the breadboarding, and and the uh, and sort of the storyboarding, which is the the uh, fat markers, sketches, and so let's sort of finish there, and basically let's let the team uh, figure out the stuff in the cycle, uh, especially because there was part of the cycle, they were you know part of all the discussion, uh, that's that's very useful. Uh, so you know there is clear goal, and you will save some time, frankly. So. I want to try this, frankly. I, we didn't try it, but like uh, I'm planning to try this in January with, with our client. We, we uh, also or already uh, have in, in plan like to do design sprint about like this new new model for, for our application. So I want to try because it makes a lot of sense to me, but maybe uh, I will be terribly wrong. So let's see. Um, and but there is also like thing that I don't like about designs or not, I don't like, but it's sort of missing for me. And I really like about shape up and it's sort of tackling the risk and unknowns and also like saying, okay, hey, don't spend time on details. Uh, the details can be figured out by, by the people. So um, I think it's really horrible names. I need to come up with something better, but uh, I, I, I sort of call them for myself, frankly risk pointer and, and simple pointer. And so what it means, I feel that it's really good, especially if you have in the room or virtual room, uh, all those different roles that can help you as a, as a shaper uh, to identify, okay, you know, 
okay, we are talking about this problem and you feel as a shaper, okay, probably it's straightforward, but maybe the full stack developer can say, actually, because the architecture there, it's really complicated. And I think it's good to know. And so what I was thinking is that it would be good, for example, when we are voting to have like this red car as, as a referee in football or something, and basically that anybody in the team can say, hey, you know, this smells like, you know, it's not good. And, you know, this problem, it could be very tricky to solve on the map. Okay, this part of user doesn't make sense. Or especially in, in when, you know, when we are talking about specific ideas uh, or then really the, the one solution, basically, I would like to encourage people say, hey, I don't feel right about this and let's discuss it. Maybe it's, uh, maybe, it's just feeling and some other member of the team will say, no, it's actually fine. And, and we can sort of uh, align on that. It could be maybe like UX issue because usually when you do new feature is somehow part of the current application. And, and when you put it there, maybe, you know, because frankly, one problem also with design sprint, you always sort of focus usually on the happy scenario, which, which is great. It's obviously, you know, the, the thing that you should start with, but, in a shape up because you are sort of tackling the risk, you should try to cover all those edge cases, right? And and usually I feel that there's no time or it's, the discussion is not structured that way. You basically, you try to, you know, narrow down to one solution and sort of you, you are avoiding discussing uh, many times uh, those risky stuff. And I feel that there should be some way to say, okay, this is not good or it, maybe it's good, but it's like, Hey, I feel there's much more than we are discussing right now. Let's point it out. Maybe we can figure out right now, or maybe you say, okay, after the design sprint, the designer or the, the full study developer will look into it and, and give us more. So I definitely want to try that. On the other hand, I feel that very, time, uh, very often happens that we are spending in the design sprint time uh, with stuff that, okay, they are maybe sort of complicated, but they are stay forward. Like for me, the difference between complicated and complex is complicated. Okay, there are lots of stuff, but they are known stuff and somebody needs to spend time with it. But the complex stuff means that at least me as a shaper and probably other people in the team, they don't know about some parts and about some sort of... Um, how to say it, like some some sort of conclusions from it or, or what it will happen from from that so i think it's way more important to to focus on the complex stuff and even if it's even simple or really it's complicated but straightforward basically leave it for the designer or for the developer to solving it during the design sprint and even now sometimes we say hey like Let's keep this. Like this is not important. Like it's straightforward. Okay, it's somebody needs to spend time, but it's not like a thing. So I was sort of formalize it basically. And for me, it's really that the designer in this case say, "Hey, you know, this is fine. Like let's not worry about this right now. Okay, I will send, spend you know one day during during the cycle, and I will figure out. We don't need to waste uh, other people other people time. Uh, the last thing." I, I put there like the day, uh, the third day is that's like optional. Again, I feel that, you know, if there, if the, if the team feels, okay, we should do probably some technical research of proof of concept thing, let's do it. And um, I was watching like this video from, I think it was on GitHub universe from, from this lady. Uh, I think it's called like prototype thinking lab or something like that. And actually it was interesting because they are doing some special user testing session they really just sketch on the paper some application and they show it to the uh, to the tester and they will uh, you know they are answering or talking about that and on spot sometimes they sort of redraw immediately on spot like uh, those uh, those sketches and that way they are saying they, they can try more things but like again for me I like the idea I'm not sure how it's actually working in practice I, I never try it. But what I like is that I feel that because we have now the, the tools like Figma and RubikZ and really it looks really great those designs, but then the people are focusing more on, on details like, okay, I would not do the uh, button blue or but, but red one, but that's not the point here. We are sort of validating sort of the high level user journey, how it fits to the application. And if it's really sketchy and really ugly, like 
as you can see, you know, I, I cannot draw, right? But actually, I think it's a good thing in this case because the 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 tester knows that you know th this is not a design. It's it's really about sort of the high level stuff, and I kind of um, it's appealing to me to try this. Basically, if maybe it will get better results to really user test just sort of these very rough sketches. And maybe we'll get you know better conversation uh, or more important sort of uh, notes or summaries from those uh, user testing. So that's why I put it to to uh, the day uh, number three. Again, uh, I will maybe thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I think now might be a good time to stop for questions. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Great. Awesome. And to everybody in the, in the round, uh, kind of feel free to open up your mic, your cam, and let's just have a have a chat, but as long as everybody's taking time, I will just start. <laughs> um, is, since you're using this with, with clients, maybe you can say one or two words about uh, the nature of the projects in the sense that I'm wondering, do you often on friends where you kind of, you don't have to think about many integration problems? Or is this something you have to take into account? How will the solution that we're building fit with existing um, apps um, of, of our clients? Um, yeah, that's a good question. And, and frankly, the, the answer is that each project is very different. Like we have projects, uh, frankly, where we are using it, which is completely under our control because the client is sort of he doesn't have experience with sort of digital world and we, we are the one helping them, which is uh, obviously easier. And then we have client where, you know, our team is part of, uh, you know, bigger, bigger, bigger company uh, kind of. So it, it, it really, it really depends. Um, but generally I would say, you know, it's actually, this is why I feel the design sprint is good. I, I saw it many times that because the stakeholders are from the very beginning and they can even draw their own concept, it is a really powerful thing because, you know, it's usually it's very ugly. Uh, usually it's frankly not, not the worst concept. Frankly, sometimes it's, they have really great ideas because it's their product, right? So, uh, but you, you know, they don't have the sort of design experience, but like we see sort of their thinking because uh, when stakeholders talks, uh, that's one thing, but especially if you have short meetings and sort of short conversation, but it's completely different if you have like sort of the whole day you're spending with them, especially when they draw their ideas and you suddenly see, okay, okay, the person was, the stakeholder was saying this, but actually it was this thing and you will, you are able to really understand it. So uh, that's why I feel that some kind of design sprint is it's really useful to to sort of integrate all those ideas and and if you have many stakeholders with especially big companies with like you know it's not easy frankly when they are in the design sprint more and more people like if it's more than seven it's a nightmare frankly and as a facilitator you are really it takes lots of energy but still i think it's super important to do it and it's super useful to do it because i don't see frankly any better way how to in some meaningful way integrate all those uh, all those ideas from from different people yeah and you do six week cycles then right you do one week uh, design sprints and then you transition into a six week cycle uh yes exactly and frankly I'm not um, sort of dogmatic about like two weeks, six weeks. So for example, what happened uh, on that client project, we, we did design sprint with a client and he felt like, okay, th th this is, okay, it's good. But he felt, okay, there are still sort of pieces missing because it was really complex uh, feature. So what we say, okay, let's really postpone maybe for one more week uh, and sort of prolong the uh, cool down period and we spend more time sort of digging into the design and sort of shaping. And then we start uh, the, the cycle a little bit or like one week uh, later. And I have to say, this was like the, the best decision uh, ever because I felt that if we start right after the design sprint, it would be like, ooh, like, like it didn't work out because there were some pieces that we like sort of didn't tie the, those loose ends. And so, uh, 
uh, one sort of takeaway for me, it's definitely better to spend with team, for example, more time really shaping and make sure that when we start, like people know what to do and there is no sort of like question, okay, so where should I start? But they, they know what, what to do and they don't feel that, okay, there's some super risky stuff. Uh, and okay, you will lose one one more week, for example, but I think it's a uh, it, it's good choice anyway. Yeah, makes sense. Anybody else have any questions? Also feel free to use the chat if you don't want to ask directly. Otherwise, I'll just continue with one or two more. <laughs> How did your first cycle go? Uh, so first cycle, actually, we, we use it on not on the client projects, but on uh, internal project. And it was um, really, I would say, really great. I, it really uh, exceed my expectation. Uh, like first, like the team was super thrilled. Like, uh, I know, for example, again, like basically, so we work just 40, uh, 40 hours per week. And I, and they were working more, but like, it was not like that I would, I or anybody else force them, they, they really enjoyed the project. So, and I said, oh, this was sort of exhausting. I said, like, guys, like there was many features that we said that we don't need to do it. And you did it anyway. I said, but yeah, but we, it was so cool and we really like it. And because I don't know, like maybe it was because of the COVID situation that, you know, they was locked down, uh, you know, in, or they were locked in, in the house anyway. So they, they did it, but it, it was uh, really, I, I, I think it was really successful. Uh, there was definitely things that uh, we could improve. But what was interesting was our first cycle with client uh, because it's something, first I was sort of worried like how to explain it that for six weeks we really sort of disappear. Uh, frankly, we didn't disappear. We still, you know, usually how we work is like at least once a week we have call with client and sort of uh, show them the progress. In this case, we did every two weeks sort of. And uh, actually the fact that we say, okay, we will, deliver on, I think it was like uh, September 3rd, we will publish it and we really did it and say, okay, so yeah, cool, uh, great. Uh, the problem there was that it was really big scope. And uh, even though we sort of published it into production, there was lots of things that we felt, okay, we should, we should have cut it down. And it was, frankly, we didn't know how to do it because it was like kind of a piece that sort of touched all the points around the application and they really change the architecture, which is always problematic. Uh, but definitely we said, okay, uh, we, sh we should try to avoid it uh, as much as possible. Uh, so uh, what happened actually that the cooldown period again was a little bit longer. I think it was like three weeks because there were sort of uh, things that we, we need to finish. But still the fact that I think it, it, it still improved the process in a way that we really try to cut it scope and really postpone all the stuff for later. And even though it prolonged the cooldown period, we deliver something on the day that we said, you know, usually in Scrum you say, okay, so you know, we will have one more sprint and another sprint, and then we will publish it. In this case, you know, we, we made the promise and, and we, we had to deliver and it, it, so it, it was good, but exactly like the, the shaping stuff and make sure that we have enough work or the right amount of work, it's it's really difficult. And definitely, I think that's something that, you know, with more sp sprints, you will get, you know, more experience and the team will get more experience. So it's difficult, but it's definitely difficult. Yeah, that makes sense. And one, like connected to that one, I think one of the most powerful concepts that I've taken from ShapeUp is thinking about instead of estimates, as you mentioned, kind of thinking more, more in terms of appetite. And, and so I'm wondering, since you kind of, you don't own the discovery of a problem, right? In your role as an agency, you get handed, handed a problem to, to work on. Um, so you you also don't bring the appetite for the problem, right? Is that something that gets gets brought to you, or how do you how do you work with kind of this concept of appetite, sizing up how much you want to spend on a solution? Yeah, that's a good question. Again, I think it it very depends on on the project. 
And frankly, it also depends on the relation between us and the clients. For example, in this case uh, that I was talking about, I think we have really good and long relationship. So it really works in a way that uh, we say, okay, we feel that we should spend, you know, six weeks, for example, on it. And, and basically, okay, yes, it makes sense. And, uh, but sometimes, you know, definitely it should be, it should be uh, the conversation you have with client. And I actually feel, you know, that we have, for example, one project where we want to start, or at least I want to start uh, trying this uh, methodology or shape up. And there is, for example, a problem that uh, basically the client is always asking, so when this will be done? And I feel really, really, uh strongly that it would be good to have the conversation the other way around so how much you want to invest in it so let's see uh, I, I can give you the details right now of, like uh, we will be uh, solving the issue on that project i think in in uh, in january and, and february so so let's see but generally uh i actually like the conversation at least with the few clients that we uh, that i i tried it's, it's actually very powerful because say hey, hey you know we described because basically shape up is what is one good thing, even with the client work is it uh, forces you to really define the, the problem and, and sort of schedule the solution. And then you have like, you can really have meaningful conversation in a, in a sense. So how much uh, dear client you would spend on this? And, you know, frankly, it's sort of straightforward and especially when you know the client, you sort of you can guess very in a, in a good way how um, you know how much they want to invest. And frankly, uh, the betting table it's that, that that's awesome part because it really forces you. Because I definitely fell in in Scrum because you have long tickets that you sort of pulling from the backlog sort of random tickets and and even for clients like if you have like twenty tickets it's really hard to to sort of grasp it and fully understand and it's really exhausting exercise but if if you use this like sort of notion of betting table that you have prepared let's say three four uh many projects and you say okay we, we we can handle you know two projects or this one big project it's way straightforward and easier uh, conversation and also for example i always had the problem with roadmap because i don't know how, how to you know how to visualize them because obviously I don't know what we will be building in in six uh, months because the okay we we are sort of knowing there is something there but it's not clear right and and shape up uh, sort of give me the words that say okay it's not shaped enough right and right now I can see I can sort of say hey we have like those four things that we can execute right now because it's ready here's other five six things that we are thinking about it and maybe tell me if we should sort of start preparing for uh, for sort of next cycle. And frankly, I, I will a little bit get uh, into that topic a little bit later in the presentation. I uh, got a question. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if I got it correctly. So you, you're doing a design sprint in, in the like uh, between the cycles and then you do a shape up sprint as well at the start of the cycle. Uh, so the, the shape up sprint is sort of modification of design sprint that I, okay. I want to try uh, in, in January. Um, but yeah, exactly as you said, sort of like in the cool down period, I think it's a good time to have all those conversations, including design sprint. And um, then like uh, in the cycle, really focus on, on the development. Okay, so that means that in the cool down period, you also integrate developers in, in this shape up or design sprint um, to, to really get to know the upcoming projects, right? Yes, exactly. And I, I feel this is really a good thing that people don't just read, you know, the pitch document, which on its own is really good, but they have even more information. They know why we did some decision. They, was, they were part of it. They were you know, part of the discussion. And, you know, I feel really good about it, frankly, like, mm -hmm. um, I know that, you know, uh, sorry. Um, no, then... I just want to say like that, that I, I, again, I understand why sort of base can do it the way uh, they do, but uh, I feel really good about it that the team is part of it. So um, then probably my question would be, um, as you don't know, really, 
what kind of project is coming up in, into the next cycle. Um, you have to shape like a selection of, of projects. Does mm -hmm. it mean that you spend kind of the whole um, cool down period with shaping sprints or with design sprints for different projects and the developers are really like um, into it so they don't really get time to do cool down stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good question. I think that I, I will touch it a little bit later, but like uh, the short answer is I'm thinking about it as, okay, you know, the cycle defines what for the next, let's say six weeks, the, the team will be working on, but we have sort of separate board, sort of shaping board or what to call it, where we sort of talk with the clients, with the team and the clients sort of what probably me as a, shaper should be sort of preparing and frankly by the way one good like one important thing for the design sprints if you want to run smoothly with good result the preparation is key and now i have sort of six weeks to really prepare it and then uh if you say okay this will be probably our next uh you know uh, priority we will run the design sprint for it and and you know i prepare lots of materials or I gather lots of insights and then sort of on the design screen, we will sort of finalize uh, the shaping. Um, so probably it's a little bit different than again in, in Basecamp that you have sort of betting table with all the options. I kind of feel that especially because we are, you know, agency, you know, clients obviously has some kind of plan. I, I try to respect that. I don't want to be sort of dogmatic say, hey, no, like you, you cannot consider anything in future, like, you know, we will start in six weeks with the clear plate. Uh, we, are, we are not doing, or I, I don't do that. And again, I, I will maybe uh, talk um, in more of that uh, a little bit later. Okay, cool. Cool, then I guess we'll let you continue, Jan. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> cool, okay, uh, thanks, thanks for the questions. Um, all right, so, yeah, I, I just maybe one last point about the design sprint. Uh, even though when you, for example, don't have time or the whole team don't have time, or for example, you are working on some stuff sort of alone, obviously like <laughs> running design sprint uh, alone, it like, doesn't make sense, but I still feel that the principles can really help you in the shaping work itself, right? And if I can sort of uh, simplify it, it's, it's about, First, okay, what's the problem and really examine it. Like, okay, who has what problem, you know, how serious that problem is, uh, how it manifests in real life. Uh, you know, I think the, the jobs to be done thinking is, is very important in that and, and can really help you to identify what is really the problem that you are trying to solve. Then if you are stuck, like get inspired, you know, uh, Google around and, and check different websites and again, for example, uh, you, I feel that you can do um, sort of design sprint in two hours in, in this way that basically, okay, you know, first 10 minutes you will discuss with the team the problem, then we will check some, some inspirational website. And then the third step is sort of like start doodling by and, and explore like different concepts. So, you know, what, what, for example, I do a, you know, share the screen of my digital whiteboard and, you know, just draw things and really, I try to force me and the team to explore at least two, three different concepts and uh, like one by one sort of. And uh, then basically again, picking, okay. So sort of we go around and say, okay, so which one do you like and why? And by that we quickly identify, okay, you know, what, what people think. And sometimes we pick just the one or sometimes it's sort of two good concept combines together. And we, we pick the best one. And frankly, the, the sketching doesn't need to be uh, something super, again, nice. I think I cannot draw nicely, uh, but it's something for me, it's more like sketching uh, and sort of mind mapping that sometimes very often that I just sort of write, you know, bullet points in very uh, weird way. And it's maybe close to some kind of mind mapping. So I would really not worry about like how, how you sketch it, just do it. And, and this visualization uh, in any form re really helps. And yeah, then you pick the best one and then, you know, get the feedback. Like 
share it on Slack or you know on Teams or Basecamp, whatever you use, and and ask others what they think, and 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 uh, that's it. And again, if you do it by yourself, you can do it the same way, right? Like, okay, so I will try this concept, then this concept, and then try to objectively, okay, what what is better, and. <clears throat> One thing again from ShapeOut, like try to eliminate sort of the complicated solution, sort of go with the with the straightforward one. Uh, I find that principle very, very, very good because very often it's like you draw something super nice, but they say, wow, this will be very complicated. And uh, if you again think about sort of the time budgeting, you need to, okay, probably I need to do something more straightforward and then. Uh, I can pick the more complicated uh, case uh, a little bit later. Um, so like moving on from, from design sprints and now I will be a little bit sort of uh, discussing, uh, let's say other aspect or other tip, how we sort of manage uh, maybe in general sort of the process of shaping uh, and everything. So again, what, one thing that I not really didn't like, but it was, I would say confusing for me. It's like that, uh, and I'm not sure if it was in the book or in some 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 podcast with, with Ryan and others was like, okay, you know, the, the shaper is doing the the, the, is the, is shaping and preparing the document. And, you know, I know that some, some people mentioned, okay, we try, but it didn't really work. And frankly, I, I remember, I sort of tried that as well, even before we start ShapeOut and basically try to encourage, because basically first thing that uh, I implemented on one project, we use for sort of creating tickets, the structure of the page, like start with a problem, uh, define a solution, uh, ideally put there like sort of some time budget, what you are thinking. And it was sort of good, like usually it's somehow working, but sometimes I felt like people don't want to do it because sometimes they just put a problem, but you know, they don't want to think about the solution. Sometimes it's like they have sort of solution, but they don't know the problem. Sometimes it's just sort of random notes. And on one hand, I always sort of encourage people to do it because I find it very useful. But on the other hand, it sort of create a mess, a big mess, frankly, because you have lots of different things. And this was like, I don't know how to, I didn't know how to handle it, uh, basically. And then, um, I tried this to the product board. I, I'm not sure if anybody tried that. And I, I'm not super, super, super happy about that tool. I feel it's like new Jira, uh, but for product managers, it's really complicated. You can do everything, but because you can do everything, it's uh, it's sort of exhausting, but uh, they have really one nice concept that I sort of steal from them. And they have like this module that's called insights. And basically it works in a way that uh, you can imagine as a inbox in your uh, email and basically that insights are sort of coming into the inbox and it could be like you really write it down in the product board or you can integrate it with Slack and whenever stakeholder or client uh, write something interesting or something meaning or like something that's worth sort of noting, you sort of send a message to this like site uh, inbox. So like we turn this like, you know, backlog to ideas and notes and suddenly like, okay, we don't need to do this because it's just notes and, you know, we, we can throw them away. But you could think uh, what we start doing or what I really like, like exercise is sort of grooming session. Again, we sort of know it from, uh, from Scrum, but when I did it in uh, Scrum methodology, I always felt it was like very weird exercise where, okay, you know, we select a few things to the sprint we sort of prioritize things, but it was like this exhausting exercise where, hey, do you guys know what this ticket is about? And it, it felt like, you know, maybe I did it wrong, frankly. I'm not <laughs> definitely an expert, but I, I felt it's not really useful. In this way, it was like, okay, I'm saying, hey, like I identify those categories and we have some like chat about it. And for example, there was really good discussion and I was thinking, okay, you know, I'm thinking that we should really improve the uh, quoting, quoting engine, but I get really good insight from the guy and they say, hey, you know, there is this thing, there is this bug that we have. It's not really bug, it's sort of like small tweak that uh, we sort of didn't want to do it because it means some refactoring. But when we want to do this feature, like it totally makes sense to make it together. And I say, wow, I didn't know that, like as a product uh, 
product person. So I sort of group them, but then the, the guy say, hey, but it's kind of tricky because we need to replace the, the library or whatever and say, okay, so what we agreed is let's do in Crudum some uh, quick research about it. Some again, proof of concept if it, the new library really works. And then another good insight where they tell me, hey, and now you, then you are like mentioning this. And again, like now we are not sort of creating any plan. It's really just discussing in general and we don't know what we will select for the cycle. But they tell, told me, hey, like if you want to do this, it probably makes sense to start with this because if you do this first, basically when we do this, we would need to uh, rewrite everything here. And it's like, okay, I didn't know that. So uh, this conversation suddenly make much more sense to me. And suddenly I sort of know, okay, what, what, uh, how the things are connected. I can even in better way start grouping things. And um, what, what I did or what we did uh, is that uh, after the grooming session, I basically start sort of putting those things together and start creating uh, a mini projects and put there on our like sort of betting uh, betting board. And I felt really good about it that, again, it really helps me to more understand the, you know, all the sort of, all the circumstances of, of the project. And I think it allows me to do a little bit better job in, in shaping. Uh, that, yeah, sorry. Pablo, did you have a question? I saw you raise your yeah. hand. Yeah, uh, hey guys, uh, hey Jan. Uh, really, really solid presentation. Sorry that I missed. I, I actually had shop internet for a few minutes uh, during the Q&A. So I don't know if somebody already raised this issue or not. Um, but when I got back into, into, the, into the slides, I was able to see Jan's um, you know, slide on just recommendations if you, were, if you were not working with a team or if you don't have time. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was literally going to ask, you know, how you know, this, everything that you showed sounds great and amazing. If you have all these people around saying like, great, let's do a design sprint, which is like not, you know, not my reality because I'm a solo product manager. We, mm -hmm. we have very few people, like we have team leads and different teams. Um, you know, I, of course, as a PM, I'm like the butler of all these people, of all these teams, right? Like I'm, I'm trying mm -hmm. to do everything they want. Uh, so that was a great, yeah, that was a great slide, you know, like, because this is how, you know, it, this could help me figure out, okay, I can still do some sort of a design sprint, uh, but on my own. And this could mm -hmm. actually be better than just doing what I'm doing, which is like start from notes, shape it, maybe share it with somebody else. And then, and then it goes to a betting table. So that, that was one part. So I wanted to thank you for that. That was a really good slide, you know, because you're, you're really catering to different types, types of, of teams of, of PMs. Uh, in my case, a solo PM. Um, and then on this, last, on this last issue, um, w w you know, and you've been talking about the, you know, the backlog and the ideas and the feature requests. Um, I'm not really sure if I, if I got or if I understood the problem correctly, but one thing that we've been doing internally here is mm -hmm. we are actually shifting the, the burden of writing feature requests to the, to, to the person who has the problem, right? Uh, and it's, it's been a weird experiment because some people in, in the front end of the business, marketing or growth, you know, they may not really understand or know a lot of how our system works. Um, but we, you know, we saw it as a way to, you know, wanting skin in the game, like using, using Taleb's, you know, um, own wording. Uh, and basically it's kind of a friction point, but it's, it's, it tells me, you know, this person really cares about this, this, this problem. And this person is willing to, to spend 30 or 45 minutes writing a, a feature request because they have to comply with this template. Uh, and we've sold it to them as like, you know, yeah, we want to see skin in the game, but we also want, you know, we also need standardized feature requests in our product backlog. Otherwise nothing is going to get done. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know, we're enforcing this, but in, you know, we're selling it, a, you know, trying to sell it that it, it's useful for everybody to, for them to be doing it that way. That way I don't have to translate, you know, a, sometimes it's just like a, you know, like spur of the moment, like issue they had, and then they want a feature request, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, after thinking about it, it's not really a feature request, it's just a problem they need to solve on their own. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not sure if, if you guys were talking at some point about, you know, having an excessive list of features uh, or feature requests, but yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of chiming in and saying we're we're shifting that burden to to the to the individuals and teams who want to uh, send something, and we're, we're just saying, hey, you have to comply with you know with our ship of template for feature requests, uh, which is yeah, you know, uh, it probably mm -hmm. similar to what everybody's using. Yeah, so um, yeah, I guess more just chime in than a question. 
sorry. No, it's, it's a great point. Actually, uh, we sort of did this the same way again from the beginning. Like, like again, as I said, like one of the first thing that we did is sort of set up this template that is basically has the same structure as the, the pitch document. But what I noticed uh, there is, okay, people are, I think like about the problem, they always try it. But I definitely agree with what uh, I think Ryan somewhere mentioned it. It's like, you know, it's different when people have experience with shaping versus uh, if, if, you know, the, the, the person is doing something else and this is sort of byproduct. And again, I definitely feel that it's super great if people are sort of pitching this. I, I think it's definitely great if they know the structure, but still I sometimes feel that, you know, it's hard for them to say the appetite. It's hard for them to explore all the risk. So I still feel that it's good if people feel as much as possible, but then still it goes sort of through this, uh, let's say filter of, of the PM basically uh, sort of finalizing yeah. it. And frankly, sometimes, uh, you know, weird example, but for that uh, service, we basically, we are parsing some Excel spreadsheet and there are many problems with that. And we have uh, literally in our backlog, like I think like 10 or 12 issues different with how we parsing the spreadsheet. And, and each basically have a structure, like what is the problem, you know, example of that uh, spreadsheet that caused the problem. And it was clear, but sort of, it was, you know, one thing here, one thing there. And, and basically guys telling me, hey, like we should group it because it's, you know, when we dig into that parsing mechanism, let's do it all together. And so what we really did, like we basically combine everything to, to one, um, uh, one sort of mini project. And we said, let's spend two weeks on it and let's do as much as we can. Let's fix as much uh, you know, issues with it as, as we can. And frankly, that's by the way, what we are doing right now. And I, I think it's, it's working uh, really well. So I definitely, I, I am totally supporter of people uh, writing down and ideally in the structure that the page document gives you, but I definitely see a value in sort of have a sort of PMs filter, or I don't know how to call it, where you think about things, maybe fill some, some details, maybe group it and somehow uh, make connection with others things. And uh, I see value in that uh, as well. Okay. Um... Maybe two next points, I think it's uh, sort of most last point. Sort of uh, in general, uh, how how our process works. And again, probably it's not, <laughs> I would say 100% uh, 100, 100 complied uh, with uh, with ShapeUp and for example, how in base can they think about it, but it, it really, uh, I feel that it, it works uh, for us. So, uh, as I said, you know, I described that, you know, we somehow organize things in ideas and notes. And then we had the, the betting table uh, board. And there are like four four columns, frankly. Uh, if I start from right, it's like in cycle, basically what we are working on now, what the team is working for, let's say six week mini project. Then we have like the options, which means like what many projects are ready and we, and you know, the client or the stakeholder can choose from it. And frankly, those columns, okay, <laughs> here's the backlog, but uh, it's a little bit different because they are for, right now, for example, it's eight items and they are, it's not like single small thing, but it's only like those bigger tasks. And basically what this is about is about me um, having conversation with the client saying, hey, so you know, what are the, your next priorities? Also, we can give our input based on, I don't know how people are using it. And say okay, so I probably should be preparing those two things, and I, that's sort of my to-do list for for the next six weeks. And you know, if it's good enough uh, in the cooldown, I will uh, in the beginning of the cooldown, I will tell guys, hey, this is what I came with. We can have some session discussing, maybe improving it. If it's big thing and we are not sure, we schedule a design sprint and 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 uh, go through it in in more detail. And ideally, then uh, we will have another option that we can discuss on the uh, during the betting table. Uh, since we don't use uh, GitHub, uh, sorry, the base camp, uh, we use GitHub, and there is no hill chart, so we sort of uh, 
hack it in a way that uh, we have like, again, the dedica dedicated board for uh, the given cycle where we have like really four, four columns, like not started in unknown phase, known phase and finish. And because I really like the hill chart idea, uh, so we did it this way. And I think it's it's useful, right? Like on the kickoff call, uh, we sort of define those main areas, those you know, tricky or the main areas that needs to be done, and then as a notes, and then basically we track them during the uh, during the cycle, and it's really. I really like it because I say, hey, so why why we didn't start with this thing? Uh, you know, is it something uh, that you are worried about or not? And if if yes, then I can sort of push people to start with that, because this definitely uh, for us it's a new thing. And this idea that you should always work on the things that are the hardest and most challenging. Sometimes you know people like to sort of uh, slip from that principle and and do the easy stuff. So uh, definitely it's a good way how to how to track things. And um, so that's one thing. Then we have like separate board just for devs. Frankly, I, I don't watch that, but it's basically sort of classic Kanban where people are saying, okay, what, what they need to do and, and the tickets are done by, by developers. And frankly, sometimes what, what happens is uh, because they need to cut the scope, some tickets sort of, they are leftovers. And what we do is, we move them to another board, like we have lots of boards, frankly, um, to cool, cool down board. And uh, again, that's a board that is used during those two weeks that where you know people can maybe finish some sort of additional stuff. But sometimes there's lots of things from that feature. And we already knew that there, there was some stuff that we wanted to do in, in sort of next phase. So then sometimes we just sort of move it to ideas and notes and again, recreate from that uh, another mini project for next phase. So it's sort of like this cycle of that from ideas and notes to, to the betting table where we are shaping, uh, then it goes to the, uh, you know, to the cycle. And there are many things that we realize during the cycle that we are not able to do it. This goes either to cool down and sometimes directly to ideas and notes. And again, we sort of group them again and put it to, uh, to, to betting table and again, again. So this kind of cycle, uh, again, probably it's not uh, like Basecamp is doing that, but um, I feel especially because we are working for clients and this notion that, uh, you know, like, you know, developers doing anything, uh, like I, Personally, I don't have a problem with it, but for me, it's like, I, I want to be sort of responsible and respectful for the client and say, hey, you know, okay, we are not working on anything big. We are working on technical depth. And frankly, it's super important. And, and it's great that it gives us this opportunity and it really, it pays back, uh, uh, but, you know, we, we should track it uh, somehow and somehow represent it. And frankly, in this case, even devs likes it, like because you know they have this technical depth, they can put there all the details, and they don't need to worry that you know to sort of forget about it. So uh, I think uh, this is this is working uh, pretty well. And last thing, uh, you know, just two again random ideas. Uh, you know, especially for us, we are starting with, still with with ShapeUp. We are using on I think like three project, four projects. And we are sort of slowly uh, scaling this up, uh, and and people, it's new for them and even for developers. Uh, so I definitely, I know that again in Basecamp they sort of you know the team is really organizing by themselves, but um, they have the experience how to do it, right? Uh, especially like cutting the scope, like always focusing on the most challenging part. That's something a bit new. So what we do is like weekly check-ins where I don't really want to make it as like normal planning meeting in scrum definitely not so uh, usually the structure is like uh like short sort of demo or like hey guys like you know how, how did it go last week uh sometimes they show something or sometimes they, they just you know describe it and then we <clears throat> go uh through the hill chart is how, how we move things and okay and discuss okay so what do, i always have this question so what do you think is the most challenging Part right now and and we discuss a bit that how to tackle it 
And if we feel that, okay, there's lots of things and we have limited time, so, you know, sort of direct them what we should probably uh, sort of cut from the scope. So I definitely feel that it, it's valuable conversation. Maybe in one year, we will not need that because, you know, everyone will be experienced, <laughs> frankly, even me. Uh, and, but right now I, I feel that it's a good compromise. Uh, second thing, um, we did like, um, sort of shaping war or design sprint and then cycle uh, for our UX page on uh, our website, which is very cr creative. And uh, what I noticed or realized that, you know, the, the breadboarding and fat map markers, it doesn't really work there because it's sort of given, like, you know, the content, but it's more about figure out the really nice, interesting branding. And so in this case, we actually sort of force ourselves to really create some examples of that branding, some uh, interesting pieces. And still in the cycle, there was plenty of stuff that ne needs to be sort of finished, but some like really visual examples. And that's where, where I realized, okay, it's not always about, basically it's again about, I think the compromise is not really about like sort of uh, sketches versus, uh, you know, detailed design. It's more about if the team knows what needs to be done. And sometimes you need to go a little bit in more detail and maybe even some visuals if it's really visual uh, stuff. Uh, and uh, versus like, uh, you know, if, if you give them just like fat markers, say, hey, you know, this will be titled the UX page. Like it will not help them basically the first, you know, the cycle will start like, okay, I have no idea what to do. I, I need to experiment. And that's uh, what probably shouldn't be in the, in, the, uh, in the cycle. So that's sort of one note aside that for those highly visual stuff, I feel that you need to take a little bit uh, different uh, approach. Yeah, and that, that's pretty much it. So what I wanted to say. So um, yeah, thanks, thanks for uh, listening to me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jan. Uh, and if you have the time, I would love to get into some more questions. Uh, also, sure, sure. Uh, Griffin Definitely. posted one in, in the uh, comments in, in the chat that I'll just read out. Uh, Griffin is asking, how do you manage client requests, especially the clients that have a new top priority every day? Uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, problematic. Frankly, uh, clients that always have a new top priority, probably there is hidden issues. Like uh, it could mean that, for example, the current architecture quality of the software is not enough and we are need, uh, we need to deal with, you know, sort of ongoing production problems. Or it could be the problem is uh, that sort of the product vision and strategy is not settled and there is lots of experimentation. So I think first step is actually, it's not really about how shape up can help with that. It's more about shaping the, 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 the root cause and sort of figure out, okay, so what we are trying to achieve and sometimes, okay, if we are still in experimenting phase, okay, let's experiment. Uh, let's do sort of this R and D phase. Uh, uh, let's do it this way. Uh, if the problem is with, you know, that the quality is not enough, okay, we should probably dedicate you know, the, the next cycle on, on fixing those issues, like improving the architecture and things like that. Uh, so <clears throat> I think that uh, it's not like the nature of the clients that there is some uh, bigger problem and that needs to be fixed. And obviously uh, sort of the normal shape up probably uh, doesn't work for that. But I still think that some principles for, from ShapeUp can, uh, can be useful, like you know, defining the problems, really examine them, time budgeting. Okay, we will be fixing issues, but let's, let's dedicate two weeks for it. Like, okay, we will not say exactly what, but uh, let's uh, time box it and stuff like that uh, are still, still useful. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> usually in my experience, though, those kind of clients, there is some underlying issues. And when you fix it, Frankly, it, it will disappear and then you can start doing, uh, you know, the normal shape up uh, process. Yeah. Uh, so the specific follow up question to that was, have you had a situation in which a client agreed to try the shape up paradigm, then figured out they couldn't wait for six weeks and didn't want to make these kinds of bets? 
Um, yeah, we, we, we had one, <laughs> which was very problematic. Uh, basically, to some degree, it was caused by the COVID situation. Um, and because the situation, uh, let's say, largely changed, like there was even more pressure to, for example, finish something in time. Uh, but still, I felt about this specific pro project, uh, this on its own would be handleable because mm. it's okay, okay, we have just five weeks and okay, so we will even more cut the scope. Mm. That will be handleable. But what wasn't handleable is that uh, there was some broader issues like I was discussing, like, you know, uh, sort of technical debt and and uh, lack of sort of product vision. And, and uh, again, my answer would be like, we need to more experiment, like what is the product market fit and, and stuff like that to, to fix it. So... Uh, otherwise, again, like, you know, we started this year, like we, we don't, and again, we, we are not using all projects. We are sort, sort of slowly uh, scaling it up. So um, I feel that I, I still feel as a, as a greenhorn and, and lots of stuff uh, we, uh, we will experience and we need to learn. So, yeah. Awesome. I'll wait a bit for any other questions. Otherwise, I can just go on. <laughs> and what I what I was thinking when you showed your workflow slide, maybe you can go back to that. Um, yes, you were talk, we, you were talking about how um, you are pulling things from the death board, kind of when the cycle ends either into the cool down board to, to, I don't know, tie up loose ends or into the ideas and notes kind of to bring it then back. Um, and from, from my experience, one of the more powerful things uh, in adopting shape was really ending a project and then being a, in a position to do something completely different that has no relation to what you just did six weeks ago. Um, and I feel like it, you know, it is a bit at odds with that. Maybe you can just say a bit about that, how you think about this. Yeah, uh, I absolutely agree. And uh, that's what I, I'm trying to sort of say, okay, you know, very cool down is your, and when we, Frankly, we do sort of like discussion, like people ask, okay, so what we should do or what you should focus, but like, it's more like conversation. Look, we have like here the technical address. Okay, yeah, do it. Like, and so actually I, I am sort of the one that discouraged to sort of continue with the project. Like if, if there are some things, okay, fine. But yeah, I very often then um, sort of move them to ideas note. So it's not tempting to, um, to, to take it. But yeah, I, I feel there's definitely a, a good point that if it's become a habit that you can always sort of finish it in the cool down, then, then that's a, that's not a great way to do it. Uh, so yeah, maybe we should uh, think about, about more and, and be even more strict about it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think we tr somehow try, try to do it. Uh, but sometimes uh, it sort of feels natural. Like definitely the good thing is that we are pushing into production, which for me is the most important. Okay, we, we deliver that work. And okay, if you want to fix few things, I kind of feel it's fine. Uh, but definitely it would be better like, okay, you know, we didn't push it to production and I still want to, you know, put there a few more things. That, that would be a bad thing. Uh, 